DaVinci Resolve has been using AI to transform the way that we edit. Things that used to take experienced editors hours can now be done within seconds with just a simple click. So in this video, I'm going to show you the 10 best AI tools that are built directly into DaVinci Resolve and how I use them when I'm editing for businesses and YouTubers who get millions of views. The first AI tool works like magic. It's unbelievable how good it is. Masking used to be one of the most time consuming processes that you could do in video editing. Another word for it in the VFX world is called rotoscoping. And they literally have rotoscoping specialists whose job it is just to cut out objects and people. That's how difficult it is to do. But now you can mask most things yourself using DaVinci Resolve's magic mask and it's really quick as well. So one thing that you can use this for is to cut people out of talking head footage so you can place things behind them. So for example, I want a couple of images to appear behind Ed. So I'll make a duplicate of my clip by holding down the Option or Alt key and dragging it up. I'll then open it up on the Fusion page Add the magic mask node and then use the on-screen picker to select what I want to mask. So with just a couple of clicks I've got Ed selected and then I'll hit track forward and let it do its thing. Once he's been cut out I then head back to the edit page. You can now see this bottom clip is the background and the top clip is the foreground. My subject. I can now add my images in between the two to make it look like they're behind him and I can also add a drop shadow to my subject as well just to sell the effect even further. This would have taken me hours before and well in fact I probably wouldn't have even tried to mask it by hand because it would have looked awful so there just would have been no point. So this tool opens up a lot of options. The next AI saves me hours and hours of time. If you've ever had to edit large amounts of interview footage into a short video then you'll probably know how difficult it was when you've sent over the first draft of the video and then you get asked oh yeah can you just add in that little bit where we talked about X, for example. And then you'd have to go back through all of the hours of footage to try and find where they spoke about that one specific thing. And it was a bit of a nightmare. But now you can find any specific part of a video within seconds using AI transcription. So let's say the client for this video wants to include a specific part where they talk about wheelchair access. Instead of listening through all of this footage, which is an hour long, we can just open up the media pool right click on the timeline, come down to AI tools, audio transcription, and then hit transcribe. DaVinci Resolve will then transcribe the audio for the whole hour long timeline. And then when it's done, we've got the whole transcription in this box. And you can click on any word in this box and you'll see that the playhead will jump to that point on the timeline. And even better, to find the part where they mention wheelchair access, I just come to the search bar type in wheelchair, hit search, and it's highlighted where he says the word wheelchair. And it's also moved my playhead to the exact moment in the timeline. So now I can just come down to the timeline and grab the relevant footage for the video. Wheelchair access as well. Or even better yet, I can just highlight the sentence that I want in the transcription, hit command C or control C on Windows for copy, and then paste in that line wherever I need it. The brief was to see 18 people comfortably, obviously with wheelchair access as well. This makes editing large amounts of footage so easy now. And something else you could do with the transcription, which could be a whole video on its own, is you can create automatic subtitles with it. If you click on these three little dots in the top right of the transcription box, and then select create subtitles from audio. You can then select how many characters you want per line and if you want a single line or two lines and then hit create and it will add subtitles to your entire timeline. These can be customized however you like by opening the effects panel, coming down to titles and then subtitles and then in here you can drag and drop any of these presets onto your subtitle track like this. And then if you click on a subtitle and come to the inspector, on the caption tab you can edit the lines here if there's any mistakes. And then if you click on the track tab you can change the look of your subtitles here. 
also, DaVinci now has animated subtitles, so they can animate word by word in lots of different ways. Just drag and drop which style you want onto the subtitle track, and that's it. It will do that animation. A potential source of embarrassment, because obviously, like we've said, this next AI tool is something that only a couple of years ago would have been impossible, but it's one that my clients are always thankful I'm able to use. So sometimes you'll edit a video for a client and they'll come back to you and say, ah, we've said the wrong thing there. We'll have to refilm that. And this might mean they either have to re-record that line themselves another day, or if a production company has filmed them, then it might mean having to get someone out to then re-record that whole line with them. And it's just a bit of a hassle. Thankfully, I've been able to fix these situations on my own using the AI voice convert tool. This lets you train the AI to be able to mimic someone's voice. So the way that I like to use this is so that I can record a client's line for them and then the AI will convert it into their voice. So here's how this works. You first need a clip of the person speaking for at least 10 minutes or a bunch of clips of them speaking, as long as there's at least 10 minutes of audio. And then you need to right click on those clips in the media pool. Come down to AI tools and then DaVinci AI voice training. This then asks you if you have permission to clone this person's voice, which hopefully you do have permission, obviously. <laughs> you then name their voice, make sure training accuracy is on better for the best results and then press start. This will probably take a while, so it's probably best to leave this running in the background. But once that's done, you won't have to do it again for that voice. So for this situation, Ed asked me to change one of his lines. The original line, he says, This video, however, only got 2,900 views. But he now needs it to say 3,000 instead of 2,900. And he was unable to record it himself. So what I did was I recorded that exact line for him. So here's what that sounded like. 3,000 views. I then dragged this into the timeline, removed Ed's mistake, and then put my line in its place. I then right clicked on the clip and selected voice convert. I then selected Ed's voice from the voice model drop down and then hit render. This then converted my voice into Ed's, meaning that the line now sounds like this. This video, however, only got 3,000 views. For stuff like this, it's best to have something covering your speaker, like in this situation where we've got this image on top. Otherwise, most of the time, it will be too noticeable if you've got them on screen as well. This video, however, only got 3,000 views. And if you really want, you can actually also use this to make your clients sing. My name is Ed Lawrence and I like to sing. Moving on to the next AI tool, and this one is pretty special. So if you've ever had to edit footage of people talking in a public place or outside, say, with a bit of wind going on, you'll know full well that this can cause a lot of issues in the edit because there's just tons of background noise. Well, if you use AI voice isolation with literally just a click of a button, you can remove all of that unwanted noise. It's insane. Just select your clip or the audio track, open up the inspector, come down to the audio tab and turn on AI voice isolation. By default, it will be around 50, which I find normally works quite well. But you can use this slider to adjust the strength of it. You basically don't want this setting to be higher than you need it. So try and get it as low as you can before you really need it to kick in. We came up with this idea of putting in a, a basically a video check-in wall, which is what we've ended up doing. We came up with this idea of putting in a, a basically a video check-in wall, which is what we've ended up doing. This is something I wish I had years ago because it's insane how quick and how good it is. Our next AI is also on the audio tab. Now, when you're editing a music track, you're able to remove instruments or change the audio levels of different instruments right here on the edit page. So for example, if you have some music in the background of your video, but you're finding that the drums aren't really necessary. The interface better with the, with the, the passengers coming in. You can just turn on the AI music remixer and click on mute drums and now the drums are removed, whilst everything else sounds the same. With this idea of putting in a, a basically a video check-in wall. You can do this for the vocals, bass, guitar, and other instruments as well. There's also slider controls for each of these, so you can adjust each of their levels to what you like. So if you don't want to completely mute the drums, you can just untick the mute button and bring the slider level down a bit. It's existed, but not all together. So we, we brought together disparate systems and have- And that's it. It's so quick and easy. This next AI tool is just such a quality of life improvement. 
Normally, when you're editing a video where you've got music in the background, it's pretty rare that it's going to be the exact right length that you need it to be. Normally, it will either be too long or too short, and then you'll have to copy and paste it, line up the beats, and then fade them into each other to extend them or to bring the end of the track further down the timeline where you need it. But now, with the AI music editor, this can be done within seconds and with total ease. This tool allows you to change the music to whatever length you need it to be, and then it will use AI to seamlessly edit the song so that the ending is where you want it. So for example, say we want this song to end here, but it's currently too long and ends over here. All I need to do is simply hit the Live Trim checkbox, drag the end of the track backwards, and then AI will analyze the clip. And now look, the ending is exactly where I want it. You can see by these squiggly lines where the AI has made its cuts. And it also gives me four different versions of it in case I don't like what it's done. This can also be used in the same way to extend tracks as well, which makes for a cleaner timeline because in the past I would have a track copy and pasted three or four times just to keep it going. And while we're using AI to edit a music track, we might as well use it to be able to time our footage to it as well. So timing cuts to the beat of a song is something that a lot of editors will regularly do for many reasons, like giving more energy to a video or to make a video just flow better. And in the past, you would have to manually use the waveforms to find out where those beats happened and then line that up with your clips. But thanks to AI, this is now so much easier. Now we just right click on a clip and then click show music beats. AI will then analyze the clip to find where those beats are happening. And then within seconds, you can see that each beat is visualized by these white lines. So now if you have snapping enabled on your timeline here, then when you drag clips over your music, it will just snap the start or the end of those clips to the music beats. And when you're done with them, you can just turn them off by clicking on show music beats again. It is such a handy tool for working with music. Moving on to our next AI tool, and this one is another huge time saver. Cutting A-roll on talking head footage like this is just a long and tedious process, and most of your time is spent removing the silent parts in between sentences. So in this case, most people will move the playhead to where the waveforms are showing that the speaker has stopped talking, just here. Make a cut and then move the playhead to just before where they start speaking again. Make a cut there and then rip or delete that clip so there's no longer a big gap. But doing this over and over again is just not a good use of your time. So this is where DaVinci Resolve's new AI powered ripple delete silence comes in. You simply select your clip in the timeline and then come up to clip, then audio operations, and then ripple delete silence. This box will then pop up with five controls on it. The four sliders will help you refine which parts of your clip get removed, which are shown by these red boxes. So the first control is the threshold slider. This is gonna tell DaVinci to remove any parts of your clip that are quieter than this amount. So if I set this to minus 34 decibels, you can see that when the person on camera is talking, their voice is over the minus 34 decibels. So it's not gonna delete those bits. But when they finish speaking, the audio drops to under that amount, so those bits will be removed. The next two controls are pre-head and post-tail. These are determining how many frames it's gonna leave as a buffer before and after a cut. So if I set the pre-head to two, it's gonna make the cut two frames before the audio comes in. And then if I set post-tail to four, it's gonna make the cut four frames after the audio has stopped. I find this is normally a good setting just so it lets the end of the sentence breathe a little bit rather than instantly cutting away. The last slider is minimum to strip. This is determining the minimum amount of frames that a section needs to be in order to be allowed to delete it. So if I set this to 10 frames, then any quiet parts that are less than 10 frames won't be deleted. This helps to avoid having too many cuts at unnecessary moments mid-sentence and leaves it to just cutting out the big gaps. Lastly, you will see that there's a checkbox for crossfade audio. What this will do is it will add a audio crossfade between every cut. This can be good in some situations where there's a lot of other noises going on and the cut needs to be smoother. But for normal talking head footage like this, I just leave it unchecked. Then you hit remove and you can see that it's removed all of the silent parts of the video meaning you can now just go through the footage and remove any mistakes the speaker's made. I am so glad this is built into Resolve now. Now, after cutting your A-roll, you might find that you're left with some jump cuts. 
This is when one clip cuts to another clip like this. And because of the dead space deleted, it now looks quite abrupt when going from one clip to the next. So this next AI tool is a great way of fixing this. All we need to do is add the smooth cut transition. This transition uses AI to create new frames that go between each cut to blend them together so they smoothly transition from one clip to the other. So instead of a jarring cut like this, clarity and purpose, which makes it feel like they're never getting anywhere, it gives you a nice smooth cut like this. Clarity and purpose, which makes it feel like they're never getting anywhere, which you can't even tell that there even is a cut. I normally set the duration to around 0.2 or 0.3 seconds because I've found that if you have it much longer then it starts going over the end and the start of the sentences which can make it more noticeable. If you find that the transition is still covering the start of the next clip where the speaker is talking something you can try is holding down the option or the alt key on your keyboard left clicking on the cut point and moving it a couple of frames to the left. If there's enough of a gap where the voice stops at the end of the previous clip, then it can get the transition done before the subject starts speaking in the new clip. The smooth cut transition won't work on all clips. For example, if the head position is too different, then it will give a weird effect like this. Or if the speaker is using their hands a lot, then it can also give some weird artifacts. So just watch out for that. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up so more people can see it. So earlier, I spoke about retiming music, but what about retiming video? As you might know, if you want to slow a clip down to say 50% of its speed, you'll need the clip to have been filmed at at least double the frame rate of your timeline you're working in. Because if it's not, then it will only be able to show one frame for every two frames in the timeline, which results in slow motion that looks choppy like this. But now, thanks to DaVinci's Speed Warp AI, this isn't a problem anymore. After you've slowed down your clip, you can just open the inspector, come down to retime and scaling, and then set the retime process to optical flow and the motion estimation to AI speed warp. You'll see a faster option and a better option. The better option is slower to render, but should normally give you a better result than the faster option. Although there's been a couple of times where I prefer the look of the faster option, so just have a play with both. And now you can see that the clip plays back in super slow motion. This is something that wouldn't have even been possible not long ago. So it's so good to have this built directly into the program. These AI tools have really sped up my editing and make my life so much easier. But there was one other major change that I had to make to save even more hours editing. So watch this video to find out what that big change was that dramatically accelerated my editing speed beyond what I thought was even possible.